Out the doodle. Okay, let me just. <coughs> <coughs> Let me just do this thing that I have to do. do oh, I've switched the volume off. Blah, 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 blah. I'm listening to myself. Change that to live chat. And. Do. Oh, heck. Excuse me. <laughs> oh dear. Well, whoopsie. <laughs> Why whoopsie? Because I posted on group that I was going to go live at seven o'clock this evening. It is now eight fifteen. <laughs> so I fell asleep <laughs> Trumpets and a fanfare <coughs> <coughs> Oh dear me So I, I, fell, oh, I fell asleep And I woke up and I thought Oh, that's great. I've made it through to the next morning. I've slept right the way through. And I thought, no, hang on. The light isn't quite right. Not quite right for morning. <sighs> oh, well, at least I had a good sleep. And then I thought, hang on a minute. What time is it? And I looked at the clock and I thought, oh, OK, five to eight. Five to eight. Oh, my God. It's five to eight. I was supposed to have been on YouTube for an hour. <laughs> oh, so I brushed downstairs, went to the toilet, made myself a cup of tea. Now, oh, I have to tell you. <coughs> My breathing is not, not great today. Um, what you're sounding all I'm sounding all muffled. It might be my voice, Maureen. Might not be muffled at all. It might might be my voice. Hang on, let me move the camera a bit that way. I do a quick refresh, Maureen. Oh god, that's all skew if now. Oh, I can't be bothered straightening it up. That'll have to do. <coughs> so, my my chest has not been good today, which is probably why I zonked out. Oh, still got embossing powder on my desk. It's a good job I'd set all this up earlier, isn't it? Okay. I don't want to keep you for too long tonight. Um... But I want to talk to you. I've, I'm sorry I've not said hello to everyone individually, but hello, everyone. And my voice is, is sounding quite quite deep. I'm sounding very deep. <clears throat> I was doing research this afternoon, and I tell you what, this is worse than having been at school. But I have to say far more interesting than my original history lessons. Um, I think it's safe to say that Mrs. Ray is probably no longer with us. My old history teacher, all she used to do was get a history book. She would open it up and we'd all go, oh no. And she would just read from it and we'd have to write it down. That was our history lesson. She, she made it so fascinating. And yet I love history. But now, didn't so much then. <coughs> so, I, so I've been looking at Wikipedia and websites about each of the royals. So I've got my, my section on um, Edward VII. 
and then I've got my, my section on George the Fifth, and then I've got you know I've got my book then on the next king. It was yeah, whichever his name was, him, <laughs> and then her dad. So I've got all of that all sort of gathered together now for the next section. But as I said before, I'm starting with Queen Victoria because I want to do this section, which is the root of how she came to be queen. OK. But my thought process for this part um, of, of the book applies to our own journals okay and what i mean by that is let me put them back where i've got them from in fact i'll tell you what let me put them there and let me put that there so if you're doing your own family tree or your own family history you don't want um like a scrapbook or a photo album where it's just boring after picture after picture with a little bit of scribbling underneath that's how photos used to be stored i'm gonna have to keep drinking my tea sorry in fact i'm gonna sorry in front of me for a bit um <coughs> <coughs> so we want to make them more interesting now when it comes to this royal journal as you can imagine I have got photographs galore and I thought I don't just want to stick photograph after photograph after photograph after photograph. I want to make them more interesting to, to, to the viewer of the book. Even if it's only me, I want it to be more interesting. And this is where we can learn a lot from scrapbooking because scrapbooking was was more about the displaying of a photograph and telling a bit of a story. And that's what I want to do in here. And I'd been, I was lying in bed and I was thinking, I just can't think about how I want to display my photographs. Okay. Now I'm going to just bear with me. I'm just going to go onto YouTube a minute because I just want to find <coughs> this lady that I've been watching. And I, I had um, oh, what, what I had a light bulb moment. There we go. His story. You see, I would have had all of this ready had I not fallen asleep. Um, go past all the Johnny Depp stuff, Carol, and oh no, more Johnny Depp stuff. Oh, come on, did I really go that far back? Seems I did. Uh, more Johnny Depp stuff. There we go. It's uh, book and paper arts. Just bear with me and I will get a link to her channel and I'll put it up on the chat. Um, oh. Book and paper arts. Now, she makes altered books and... Um, But she, she she only does like when she shows her books, she only show, she only has a few pages in her book. Control V. There we go. So I've just put the link up in chat. And it was from watching her displaying her book, showing what she did in them. That I had this light bulb moment of like, right, okay. What I needed to do was I needed to stop and think about about all the photographs that I've got and the people that I want to show, I need to think of them in terms of paper dolls. If I had a big bag of Tim Holtz paper dolls and I just wanted to make a book just purely with those dolls, how would I work that on a page? And that's what gave me my light bulb moment. OK, they would make a cup of tea again. I also got to thinking about how through the years 
the process of displaying photographs has changed. So, you know, we can talk about um, one time um, when they got photographs printed, they were displayed on cabinet cards. And in fact, hang on, I've got some to hand because I took the photograph off them. So you got your photographs like this. And they were oh, plain one, plain one. <laughs> oh, great. I picked up all the plain ones. There we go. And they would have the advert on the back of the person who um, took the photograph. These were also known as calling cards at one point. So that, um, you know, if you were a young lady and you'd been around to call on a gentleman or vice versa, then uh, you'd have your details on there. Um so I knew that I'd got three digital kits of these wonderful, almost like works of art. Um, and so I'm going to be using those for two of the kings. I'm going to be using those. And then the other thought that I had was I had purchased... Um, an old photo album and so I've got loads of these empty photo album cards so I thought I might use the odd one or two of those and then I thought I've also bought a modern one with florals on it so I could use the odd one or two of those now I can't use all of these in the journal because it would just bulk it out too much they'll be too thick and too heavy because they're made from board okay um but i could replicate so i could actually make my own then i got to thinking well okay that would be from from you know covering maybe two of the kings and then i thought as we start start to get slightly more into um her father's reign and her reign we're then talking about polaroids which you know we're, we're then talking about the white boxes <coughs> excuse me the white squares which have then got the photograph slightly offset and also negatives um so sort of that kind of a display um and then it sort of went on to scrapbooking so I've actually got, from a historical point of view, a method of being able to display all of the photographs for all the different kings and queens um, through, the, through the ages, so to speak. <coughs> In ways. Now, there's plenty of ways to... Um, <coughs> oh, plenty of ways to... I forgot what I was going to say. What was I going to say? Oh, the joys of having fallen asleep. There's plenty of places to go and look for scrapbooking ideas, which is another way of sort of looking at ways in which you can display your own photographs. As I say, for me, it's going to be based around the historical thing because the first part of the book is about each of the kings and queens, their children and who succeeded after them and so on and so forth. But then it's going to go on to Elizabeth. And the, I've got tons of photographs of Elizabeth, but I didn't want it to be boring. But if you've got the likes of a book like this, or have a look on Pinterest, or maybe you've done some of these yourself in the past. Um, this lady has come up with some great ideas. Um, and I didn't get a chance to mark pages. Let me just look for a particular one. Um, right, so I, I don't want that one. I love, I love this one, actually. I've got to show you this one because I thought it was quite funny. So she's actually done a paper doll. <laughs> and then she's got photos, Constantine ring off the back. So I thought that was quite a cute idea. But again, it's another idea. You know, it doesn't have to be a paper doll. It could be something else. So it could be, a, for me, <coughs> could be a 
a red telephone box and then have a concertina coming off the back with loads of photographs of the Queen on it. I know that the context of a telephone box and the Queen don't quite go together, but it's just the thought. There we go. Now, I did um, a collaboration a while ago now with Pink Odd Bird. <coughs> Sorry, my voice is getting deeper. Um, with Pink Odd Bird about using postcards and um, how we then decorated them. And this was where I'd got my original inspiration from. Was this lady had uh, been away on a holiday and she bought a load of postcards. And what she did was she cut herself out and stuck it on the post, stuck herself on the postcard and wrote on the back of the postcard what the photograph was relating to. Um, so here, she wasn't actually there. She cut out a picture um, of herself and her husband and put it on the postcard and then wrote about it. But she wrote about it by typing up the words and then cutting them out and sticking them on individually, even if it was on top of an old postcard that had already been written on. Now, again, I'm not saying that that's what, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to be using in my journal, but it might be consideration for you for a different type of journal that maybe you want to do about your own family. OK, so there's lots of different ideas. You just need to improvise and imply, um, em sorry, not imply, employ it with your own journal and whatever it is that you're wanting to share. So whether it be scrapbooking, historical, like mine is, or your family. Um, now, I decorated some, some cards up and I don't know whether I... I ever showed these um, but I just cut up a, a sheet of A4 craft card and was just messing about just started decorating them up and when I was sorting through for this particular video tonight I thought actually I could use some of those and especially if I've got photographs of the Queen that are that I could easily cut out her silhouette so that it's like a paper doll. I could then insert that picture of her on the likes of these, and then I could write on on the back of that because I've made these so that they are like postcards. As I say, I don't think I've shown a video on on how I did these. So basically, I just did. Um, I, did a, I did a very subtle background, patterned background, and then did some bubble wrap, and then did some dictionary page. Um, I stamped some numbers on and a, and a different logo sometimes. Used a sticky flower, used a bit of a bus ticket on this one. But I could sit a picture of the Queen by cutting her out on there and then scribbling about her on the back. So I thought, oh, they'll do for later on in my journal. And in fact, I could even attach these so that these sort of concertina are out or flip out from a page in the book. So I'm keeping those aside because I can use those. In fact, we'll stick you. You go in there. No, you won't. OK. We'll stick you in there so that I won't forget you. OK. So that's just a few, few of my thought processes. Let me just move this lot over. Because I'm actually going to start gluing some stuff in. Because, oh, thank you, Laurie Lee. That's really kind of you. Thank you. Um, if anyone else would like to donate some pennies to the cause cause being me of course <laughs> there is a dollar sign um on chess um where you can either do a super chat with a, a little picture um or donate some money like laurie lee has just done so thank you my lovely you're very kind 
Okay, slurp tea done. Now, Victoria is who I'm starting with. So, did I put it away? Oh, I did, because I had it out. Thank you very much, Pat. So, for me, I wanted to do the family history of, and I started at Victoria, Queen Victoria, and then went on from there. So, I wanted to do Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, who then went on to Edward the Seventh, who then went on to George the Fifth, who then went on to Edward the Eighth and George the Sixth, who then went on to Elizabeth. OK, so I wanted to do this is the route that that took her to being queen because she wasn't naturally in succession to be the queen because it was supposed to have gone down here down edward the eighth's route but he decided that he did not want to be queen and he wanted to be with mrs simpson so it went to his brother and it's his brother who gave birth well he didn't give birth the mother did but he had elizabeth as his daughter so she would not normally have been queen but that's how I wanted to show the succession of how she got there. So that's going to be the first part of my book. And I wanted to do a little bit of a historical background. I'm not going to write a big essay about each of them. But I want to show the Queen, in this case Victoria, and her husband Albert, and some pictures of her children. Then I want to go on to show Edward VII, a picture of him and his Queen Alice. And some pictures of their children and then George V, so on and so forth. OK. So bearing that in mind, I set up I've set up Victoria's section. OK. So. Oh, bit of fluff. So this was the first page where I have. Um, attach this piece of paper, which is where I'm going to write the index for each of the chapters in this book. OK, so that flips up and that's that. Then on this next page. These are the pieces that I've made to go on here. And so what I've done is this was part of the digital kit which I've cut it out and I'm going to use it as a pocket. But what I also did was I cut out from my lace digital kit um, a part of one of the designs, one of the pages, and I've made it so that it's taller. So I cut along the edge so that I've now got a pocket here. I put some embossing powder on this section so that that is now shiny and slightly raised. And then I added a piece of lace across the bottom. Right, so that's going to stick in my book there. So we get to actually see a little bit of sticking and gluing into my book. But this is going to take me quite some time to work through to get it how I want it. Um, so I want to do um, another couple of videos on it. And then I'm calling it a day in terms of showing you what I'm going to be doing in it and hopefully giving you some ideas. And then I'm going to go off and go and work on it at my own leisure. So I tend to use my multi Tombe glue as one of my stronger glues, Melissa. <coughs> Excuse me. Um especially when I'm adding things like pockets because it adds a little bit more strength to it. Um, but I use different glues for different purposes. And I'd, I have a video on that <laughs> about why I use different glues and which ones I use for which reason. OK, so now these two cards are for me to write on to say, it's me doing this book. So I mean, hopefully in years to come, they'll go, oh, it's that silly Carol that's done this um, and I can write when I started making the book and when <laughs> cross-fingered I finish it okay 
So they're going to go in there. And then behind the, the behind the lace pocket bit, I can add a tag, which will, could be decorated and will go up here. OK, this first page is going to be my title page for this section, which is, um, as I say, this is about the root of how it went um, from Queen Victoria through to Elizabeth, how she got there. So it's about each of the kings and queens. So I found this little image which says the kings and queens of England, which is the front cover of a book. So I'm going to add that on there. So all I did was cut it out, stick it onto a piece of um, thick card and added some of my peel offs to add that little bit of a, a gold doings. <laughs> I've also um, from the digital kit, I printed out um, the uh, Rose of England which is a combination of the Lancashire Rose and the Yorkshire Rose from the War of the Roses. And so that's going to go on there. And then I've got a little crown again from the DigiKit and that will go there. And then I'll need to put a tab on here to say that this is going to be chapter one. Now, I haven't worked out about my tabs yet. Um, I'm not sure whether I want them all matching or whether I want them all different. <coughs> <clears throat> so let's stick these on and i know what i want oh i know they're over there i can't get over how, how manly <laughs> i sound very manly today you know maybe this is where i could have that other job doing sexy phone calls So yeah, whenever I'm ill, I could just do sexy phone calls on the side. <gasps> oh, no chance. Right, so I want that slightly off centre. I'm not making it into a pocket or a tuck because it gets to a point where you can have too many pockets and tucks. Not everything should be a pocket. Just bear with. I need. I need, I need, I need. Right. Some of my, my pop ups. So I want this to be dimensional. And I don't feel that I have to ink everything up either. Let me just see how sticky that is. That's not too bad actually. Because these can dry out and I don't use them very often. And so um, if they have dried out a little bit, I do tend to normally put a little dot of glue on the back of each of these for safety purposes. So it's the same as I don't, I'm not a very trusting person, am I? Because I don't, I don't trust me washi tape either. <coughs> So I always put glue down before I use my washi tape. So I'm just covering each of those little points of that rose. And we'll put some in the centre as well. So I want it to be a balanced so that all the weight of the paper so it doesn't sag. In the centre, so I'll put four of those on. Now this is the bit I hate. This is the bit where the paper never comes off, and then it sticks to your finger because of the static. Oh, I'm sounding like a right old misery guts. Don't like this. I don't like that. I have to have glue on here. I don't trust that. <coughs> don't normally behave this well and especially when you're doing a live everything goes a little bit like oh no 
you said that it was going to be easy so we're going to make it difficult for you now you know how inanimate objects suddenly have a mind of their own and they do things that they don't normally do so yeah it's normally like that okay so with the english rose we have make sure i've got it the right way around that way around that no, that way around there we go so you've got the two petals at the top and the oh hang on have i got it the right way around i think now there we go two petals at the top and one at the bottom okay if you have it any other way then it's the wrong way around i think it's that way or is it yeah no there we go two petals at the top and one at the bottom i knew there was a right and a wrong way so i'm going to put that on there to add a little bit of dimension and as I say, I haven't inked that up. It's not everything has to be inked. And then I thought I'd have a bit of a crown down there. And again, I'm not inking that up either. And then this then becomes my title page for the journey that uh, it takes. Do, 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 do. And what I'm thinking is that um, I'll do another video um, tomorrow on tags and how I'm going to decorate up some of the tags and um, we'll see how we'll go from there as to whether I do one on Saturday or not but then on Sunday Sunday's a special day, going to do an all day session, but it'll be a case of do a session in the morning and then stop for a, for a brew, brew and bathroom break, then stop for some lunch, then stop for afternoon tea, <laughs> because I want to work on one project, which was the kit that I sold in the pop up shop with the greetings cards but I'll, I'll go through all the materials on sunday so that um you can all craft along with me okay so that is that is now my title page for this section this first chapter okay and then as i say i will be putting tabs on each of the chapters times on sunday um god you wanted me to be that organized <laughs> probably about i'll start at 10 o'clock uk time I'll, I'll post up on saturday when i've had a minute to think so i'll probably start 10 i need to check what times we did last time because that worked quite well the last time i did the all day thing didn't i <sighs> All right, just bear with. I need to just get something. Hmm. Don't need them. So the first, um, the first couple for those that live abroad, you're probably going to miss the first couple because it'll be early hours of the morning for you. So you will need to watch it sort of maybe from midday onwards, my time, and um, and then catch up on the others, if that's the way in which you want to do it anyway. Okay, so this first section, this first chapter, I want these two pages to be about uh, Queen Victoria, okay? I'll, I'll post up times on Saturday, both on YouTube and on uh, on the Facebook group. And I got myself some peel offs ready, but I've already prepared some of the pieces. OK, so basically um, I printed off this image of Queen Victoria, cut her out just purely as a picture. I don't want any paper doll type at the moment. And I stuck it onto the back of. Um, the digital paper from the kit all right um, very plain very simple um, 
but I'm going to be adding decoration to it. All right. So that is going to be a tuck spot. All right. Thank you, Laura Lee. <laughs> so that is going to be glued down, down three sides. Now, I also made as well, um, I, I found this on the internet. And it's the Cunard Royal Steamship Champagne uh, Naval Review at Spithead on Saturday, the 26th of June, 1897. The Diamond Jubilee of the reign of Her, Majest her Most Gracious Majesty, Queen Victoria. So this was all to do with her Diamond Jubilee. And so I printed that off and I've put that... Um, some backing paper on on the back of that so that that will tuck inside of there I will add um, so I'll punch a hole and I will add either seam binding or or something to the top of the tag but for the meantime <coughs> excuse me so I want glue down that side and the bottom down that side and the bottom so just around the three corners at two cor oh blimey just along the two sides not corners it's all carol okay so that is going to go there now what you want you might notice is i'm not putting everything in really close into that that crease area down there um because I want everything to have room, room to breathe. And if I push it right the way down, it can end up getting caught because obviously this is going to get quite full and that spot there is going to get quite tight. All right. So that's a picture of her there. As I say, this tag is going to sit inside of there. I'm not going to push it in too far for now because that I need to let that glue take. You might also remember that. Oh, that's just all my flowers falling on the floor. <laughs> oh, that'll be fun. At least it wasn't my cup of tea this time. <sighs> when I did the um, the faux rice paper um, video, I also said that I'd had a go at doing some of the. Some of the skeleton some of the skeleton leaves <coughs> and so these have got the shiny pva glue on the back of them which means now that it makes it quite easy for me to be able to attach these to my journal so I, what i was thinking of was i would just have two of those leaves uh that way around or that way around i think the big one at the top and that one at the side so it's almost poking off the edge of the page but not quite okay so that's where i want them so it now makes them easier in fact if i stick that to that stick that glue to that leaf so they're now stuck together and then on the back there you can see that i want to sort of come down there and then go across okay so come down there and come across and then i can fill that bit in whereas before i wouldn't have been able to do that because the skeleton leaves would have just broken up so at least with having that pva glue on the back it makes it easier and i'm just sitting those now so that they're on the edge of that section there and that glue will dry clear and then i've got um yeah the glue will show for now but it'll dry clear lorraine <coughs> um so i got myself this letter fancy letter v cut it out backed it with my paper and inked up around the edges and that's going to sit on top uh, 
Okay, so that's going to sit on top of there. All right, so that's going to be my Queen Victoria page. And on the back of this tag, I could write hatched, matched and dispatched, as my mother used to call it. So um, she, she used to like reading in the newspaper what she called the hatched, who was born, the matched, who had got married, and the dispatched, who had passed. So I could write her hatched, matched and dispatched on the back of there about her now her hubby was prince albert <clears throat> all right and i'd got this picture frame here which um i printed out and cut it all out and then i have covered it with just the picture just the frame itself i covered the frame with my clear embossing powder, okay? Have a slip of tea. I then printed off, I've got a big picture of, of Prince Albert, and I put him through the laminating machine, but this time using um, the glossy, uh, folders oh hatched matched and dispatched that's what she always used to say hatched matched and dispatched um so i put him through with some glossy laminating sheets uh, and then stuck the two together and so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to add, add him um i should have had her higher because she is the queen he should be the lower citizen, but I'm going to add, add him there and I'm just going to glue it top and bottom and, and down the side so that I can insert a journal card in there with his hatched, matched and dispatched info on it. So because I used the laminator, I only used one one half of it. So I've only covered the front. It means that the back is now paper. So. I'm going to, oh, in fact, I did it as a, I added some of my micropore on the top so that when you added something into the pocket, it wasn't catching on the edge of the paper. So I'd obviously intended for this to be a top loading pocket. So that's put me right. So I'm just going to add some glue around the three sides then. So it becomes a top loading pocket and not a side loading pocket as I'd originally thought. <coughs> So maybe he can afford to come down a little bit further to allow for something to be top loading. I'll just sit my hand on there for a minute. Now, the other thing that I got out was my peel offs. And the reason why I got these particular ones out, you see these little corner pieces on here. <clears throat> and I'm going to put these corner pieces on the three corners there in fact, that's not sticking so let me put a bit more glue on there i didn't obviously hold it for long enough did i nor you <laughs> the nothing sticking my husband reads the obits first and says that says that just check to see if my name's in the paper <laughs> my dad would say something like that it's one of, it's one of those little dad jokes thing isn't it <laughs> a bit like yeah yeah whatever dad okay and then i want to peel these off because the victorians liked things very very ornate i didn't get that quite in the corner right did i Make sure I've got that right, yes. Uh, 
right, it's going to go there. Stick your blighter stick. <clears throat> and sometimes it's easier to use tweezers with these things. I don't think I got that one quite right, did I? Nearly, but not quite. Okay, so I might need to add a little bit more glue on the back there. Now, I did think about using um, a kind of nameplate, but I think that these might be too big. Now I've moved in further down, because so I did think about the ornate one, but maybe I need to do something maybe a bit smaller to put on who he is and then I can add a tag in the top in there to say who Prince Albert is okay so that's that page kind of done I think it may be because Carol moved her work Lorraine hey what do what what where do the pretty shines come from uh, well these are called peel offs Melissa which um, you just have to sort of Google search those. Then I don't know. I've I've had mine for years, and I've got hundreds of them. Hobbycraft sell them as well. So, but they're called peel offs. If that's what you're referring to. Okay. So that will be my page of that that queen, um, who, up until a few years ago, she had been the longest reigning queen. Obviously now Elizabeth is, of which I realised I made a boo-boo because <clears throat> I'd said that Elizabeth had been the longest reigning monarch in the world and she isn't. There was a, I think it was a King Louis, I could be wrong, who has reigned for two years longer than Elizabeth. So she needs to keep going for another two years to have the world record. So that's my two pages about them. And then this page will be about the children. So let me just remove all my bits and bats. So I've got a penny black photograph, which I'm going to stick. This was a pocket that I'd added as a demonstration piece using the lace digital kit of mine. <clears throat> so I've stuck that pocket on there. So I've got pictures like this of her children. She had nine, nine, nine. Oh my God, nine. I mean, two were bad enough. So there was Victoria, Albert, Edward, Alice, Alfred, Helena, Louise, Arthur, Beatrice and Leopold all right so I want to um, create that as a journaling card and what I will do is it's got this fancy scroll pattern going around it so I want to fussy cut around there and then I will add that onto a piece of complimenting card or even onto a greetings card that I can then open up and I can write on the inside of the greeting card or on the back of it and that will sit in my pocket there. And I'm not going to do this bit now, but I'm just going to show the idea. I've got the penny black stamp. So that will sit, take that out, you can see that better. That will sit on top of this pocket here, but I will add only glue on the two sides. So we'll do that bit. So add the glue onto the two sides. And then that will sit on there. And then it means then that I can add, sorry, we're out of frame up there, aren't I? And then I can add a long piece of paper or like a thin bookmark 
will sit underneath that postage stamp and add a little bit of direction and dimension to the page because of all the different sort of shapes and patterns. So like here, I've almost created like um, a collage, so to speak, with the pocket, with the leaves, with the V, with the little extra doodads, with the tag. It's almost created like a, a collage effect. OK, so my collage effect on here will be the pocket with its little lacy cut out, the, po the postage stamp, which will have then the long bookmark behind it. And then it will have the picture of the kids in there. So it's created this collage effect look again when you're looking at the page as a whole. All right. And just have a slip of tea. You've got six, Brenda. Oh, you had too many late nights, uh, too many nights of think to do. <laughs> Mind you, I noticed that you were talking about heights of children last night on Rosemary's Live. Was it you that's got the... No, no, it was um, Susan who'd got the seven-footer nephew. Okay, so... That's the collage kind of effect that I'm going for on there. And as I say, I will fussy cut around this and add a piece of card on the back. Now, I've then got these two tag pieces with some pockets and I've done nothing more to them. I'd originally stuck this little lace envelope um, into this pocket, but I might not use that there because what I then want to do is I've got this of each of the children. And back in that day, they used to have um, gilded photo frames, metallic photo frames, which opened up out into individual sections. So it would be that would be a section and that one would fold in and that one would fold in um, and they would have those on display on their shelving okay um so then that could be another one where those three fold in so i think that that's what i'm going to do with these or i'm going to cut them out individually so i shall either cut this out as a circle cut this one out as a square cut this one out as a square and and do them as individual little tags which i can then Rosemary Morris is who I'm on about. Um, and then I can add those little tags to either inside the pocket or I can punch a hole in my tag and add those as swinging tags to my tag. OK, so I've got these of each of the children. And again, if I make these into tags, I can write on the back of those tags which child it is and, and their hatched, matched and dispatched information. And I've also got a, a photograph of them when they were older. So I could actually um, make two tags together. So let's say that this is her when she was little and this is her when she was older. So I can attach those two together. I don't want to do them back to back because I want to be able to write on them. Um, but I could have them as, as one tag, two joined together so that they swing in separately. Um, so, yes. So I'm going to have a play about with those and make those into individual little tag pieces. As I say, I'm not showing you what I'm going to, I'm not doing with these. I'm just going to talk you through it. And then, and then I found this one um, and I thought this would actually make a nice little booklet that I could fold and again write some more information about the family inside of that and then that could go sort of inside the pocket there and then I found this old photograph from out of the book and this shows sort of the whole family so this is an old Queen Victoria with all her children grown up and you might not be able to see it because we all know that this camera is not very good at, at sort of making a clear picture. But I thought, 
This poor unfortunate lady, she looks very much like um, one of the wicked witches in um, in um, Dorothy clicking her red heels together. What's he called? <laughs> Wizard of Oz. When you when you, in real in real person looking at this photograph, she looks very much like. <coughs> One of the wicked witches. <laughs> but what I thought was having this as some kind of a fold out on this page here. And I haven't quite worked it out yet how I'm going to do that. I don't know whether I'm going to do it that way or that way. Um, and then obviously I've got the list then of who everybody is. And this was taken at, at um, Osborne House. OK, so I want to do something with that. And then that will be my section on Queen Victoria and, Alf and um, Albert. So it's just one, two, three, four pages. That's all I want to do. And then write little descriptions about each of them um, and some of their achievements. That bit's for my own pleasure of what the information is that I want to put on there. All right. So that's how I'm displaying the photographs for Queen Victoria, All right? So quite ornate, um, sort of a collage effect overall, and that will be them. I will then go on to the next one, which was um, the child that was affectionately known as Bertie, which was this one, who was uh, oh god, I on. Where's my notes? <sighs> Edward the Seventh. Yeah, Edward the Seventh, which is yeah, was him. And you'll you'll find as well that a lot of the kings, they've all got this kind of beard and moustache look. I don't know why. All the kings have got the the beard and the moustache look. Look, see beard and moustache. Um, so this will be about Edward the Seventh, right? So there'll be one or two pages, one, two, three, maybe four pages on Edward the Seventh. But what I'm doing for Edward the Seventh and George the Fifth is their photographs. I'll display on the back of the cabinet cards because that will be more in keeping with the era of their time all right um so that's what i'll do for those and then when i go on to the next lot of kings which will be um queen elizabeth's uncle and her father and then on to starting to do a little bit about her and her childhood then i'll start to use like the polaroid effect um, a little bit more so there'll be a little bit of cabinetty card and a little bit of polaroid so it's moving in time with how i'm displaying the photographs does that does that kind of make sense so i'm trying to keep the how the photographs are displayed according to each of the eras so 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 like this image of George, George the fifth, yeah, George the fifth, I'll display onto one of these cabinet cards. And then I'll I'll rough up all the edges to make it look old. All right. So that is all I'm showing you tonight. I just wanted to show you how I was starting off the book. And the considerations of demonstrating how I'm going to be adding the photographs. So the next time you'll probably see this, this particular book, is when I've added more photographs along the way. Um, it, it won't be in tomorrow's video because tomorrow I want to start talking about making some tags and the backgrounds of them um, so that I can start to add stuff on about Queen Elizabeth. Um and then sort of, you know, one for, for Albert here as well. Um, 
So I want to talk to you about tags tomorrow and, and show you some examples of some tags and how, how I'm going to start adding those um, to get them to fit in with this journal so that they all kind of tell their own story. Um, but yeah, I will carry on working on this at my own pace because it's going to take me quite a while to fill this book up. Um, yeah, I'll do a final flip through once it's completed. Um, but you know, it's going to take me a while to do that because I've got other projects to do in between to entertain you guys. So you know how you can just go off and go and work on a journal. I can't do always do that because I'm working on the next project to demonstrate for you guys on YouTube. The size of my book, the size of this particular book is, well, it's a Reader's Digest book, so they're all of a, they're all of an averageish sort of size, but this is five and a quarter inches wide. And this is seven and a half inches tall. Yeah, I've done a lot of research on it, a lot. Um, because it, it needs to be historic, historically right. Um, and as I say, this one is about her journey of how she became queen. That's the first chapter. Then it's about her childhood um, and her sister. Then it's about her marriage. Then it's and her children. Then it's about um, her own coronation. Then it's about um, her achievements um, while she's been queen and her family, you know, all about her children and, and their stories. And then towards the back, there will be a section on Philip's passing, her husband, and there will be a section left which will be for her passing um, because she is 90, 96, I think now. Um, so I will leave a section for that, which hopefully won't be for a few more years yet. But obviously time is not on her side. Um, her health is not on her side. So there will come a time. Um, and then obviously then Charles will become king. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll show you intermittently every so often how I'm getting on with it, but it, I, I love things like the Tudors and I loved it all about the Plantagenets. I'd like to do a section in here about the TV programs that have been made, you know, like the crown, the King's speech, all of those sorts of things. So there might even be a little section on, on TV programs and films about, about the Royal family. Um, but this is just for me. This is my personal, almost like my little bit of a hobby. Because it's hard to have this as a hobby when you do it as a job. <laughs> okay, does um, anybody have any questions that they would like to ask me about my journey? Or, or any questions about the journal? Oh, the other thing is about the next two kings is I'll probably add... Some of these. Uh, thank you, Becky. You're very welcome. Um, so I might utilise some of these. Oh, and I'd also got. Um, I'd also got a load of these as well. Yeah, I've watched that twice. <laughs> Watched the full series of the Tudors twice about Henry VIII. Love that era. Good evening, Emma. <coughs> <coughs> so, yeah, so I might use some of these on Elizabeth. Might chop up some of these as well. <coughs> will there be a page for Harry? There won't be a page for Harry, but he will be included. Not quite sure about the wife, but. You know, she can't not she can't be avoided, can she? And, you know, we've all got skeletons in the cupboard and stories we'd rather not tell about our families. But that's that's their family. Um, personally, my personal feelings about those two shouldn't be affecting this because this is about a historical um, celebration of her, of Elizabeth's jubilee. 
um, I got an open university pass on the Tudors in my 40s. Oh, how lovely, Jackie. Yeah, I've got the box set as well, Marguerite. In fact, I've got two. got two different box sets. Um, yeah, this way on replay. Um, Brenda's, but I've got the Tudors on Blu-ray. In fact, I'm probably due to watch the Tudors again very shortly. But I, I did like um, the White Queen. Uh, um, was it the White Princess? Um, and I've got the books as well, which is all about the um, the Plantagenets um, leading through to the Tudors. <coughs> <coughs> so, so, yes, that's where I've got with this journal. And I have got, um, I have got the other one. So what I might do with with what's left over that might go into this book so that I can make a second one because I showed how to make the two different types of journals so this one was stitching the signatures into the cover and this one was to make the hidden spine um so yeah you never know I might keep this one and, and have that as a follow-on might even keep it and do it as a Plantagenet or Tudors. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I think probably whatever's left over, because I've got mountains, mountains of pictures and books um, that I could add to this one. So, yeah. So tomorrow night, there'll be a quick video about some tags. Um, I'm hoping that the builders won't be here tomorrow. Uh, but they still need to come back and come and do some work. Um, fortunately, they're not creating a lot of dust, but it's been warm and humid lately, past couple of days. And so there's a bit of a storm of brewing. So I think that that's what's affected my, my throat and my voice. Thank you very much to the moderators for keeping everyone in check. Because you know how, how naughty they can all be. Um, and thank you to Laurie Lee. And there was another lady. I missed who it was who donated some pennies to the cause. So thank you very much for that. It's very much appreciated. And it does. It's surprising how much it helps me out a lot. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, especially with the situation that I'm in at the moment. I hope that it's given you some inspiration about, you know, how you can think about um displaying it was pat that was pat was the other lady thank you pat um i hope it's given you some inspiration about how you can think about displaying your own photographs or your own images um yeah all right okay thank you very much for joining me i do apologize for being late i'm going to go and have a piece of cake a piece of chocolate cake and a cup of tea in bed <coughs> I might even get the Tudors out and start watching them again because now I've had a little sleep I'll probably be awake till all hours anyway there we go <laughs> cake see you in a minute you can get your hands off my cake because it's all mine Emma all mine <coughs> <coughs> yeah. no one else is having any <laughs> okay guys thank you for joining me um, it's been lovely having you all here again and I shall see you all again really soon. Ra, see you tomorrow. Bye for now. Bye.